Dan Henninger joins me right now, Wall Street Journal editorial board member, and I'm telling you, Cracker Jack writer as well. Ron Christie, former Bush 43 special assistant out of Washington. Um, Dan, which wins out in this argument? Of course, no one likes a constitutional crisis right. if that's where this could be heading. Way too soon to say that. But that's what they were weighing when we were down more than 350 points, offsetting whatever gains we were getting from tax cuts. What do you think? Well, I think, you know, markets are uh, supposed to anticipate events. And uh, I think yesterday we saw them anticipating uh, most likely success for the tax bill. It ran way up on that. And the market's already at an historic high. So perhaps it got a little bit frothy. Use the Flynn stuff as an excuse. Yeah, and he used the Flynn stuff as an excuse to sell off some today. It hasn't been a big sell off. The Flynn excuse, uh, the Flynn event was was significant. There's no question. This is the former head of the director of national intelligence right. pleading guilty to lying to the FBI. We have a special prosecutor who's looking in to uh, whatever happened between the Trump campaign and the Russians in the election of 2016. So it was more than nothing. And I think what the markets have to do, all the rest of us have to do, is absorb just what exactly is the significance of Mike Flynn's plea. As Catherine Herridge was reporting earlier on Fox, Mike Flynn is broke. This guy has no money. He yeah. cannot go forward trying to defend himself against Robert Mueller. So he has basically copped a plea. And the question is, what, if anything, can he tell them about the rest of the members of the Trump campaign? Yeah, you do wonder, though, because he copped a plea on one issue of lying when there were so many other potential charges, we're told, that could have landed him in jail if found guilty for decades. This is one that, at worst, if at all, could amount to a few months in jail. So something was arranged. Well, something was arranged. But again, we should try to focus on what a special prosecutor right. does. Uh, his brief was to look into uh, events of the 2016 election, <clears throat> election and possible relationship between the Trump campaign and the Russian campaign. But ultimately, his mandate is to bring charges for crimes committed. His mandate is not simply to find evidence of collusion. He's not going to give a report to the American people about... Sometimes he about can veer, as we learn with Ken Starr, into directions having nothing to do with the original intent of the investigation. That's right. Yeah. But ultimately, he has to find evidence of crimes, indictable crimes. And so far, after Too a early, year of this, you know, there's no evidence of that. Okay. Uh, switching gears, Ron Christian, I apologize for delaying getting to you. We're also getting reports on what has gotten these potential yes votes on the part of some senators who were sitting on the fence. We are learning now that a lot of the key uh, points they agreed on was, for example, keeping the AMT, also restoring the property tax deduction, though with a $10,000 cap, that would be just like what's, uh, what they cooked up in the House, uh, re restoring deductions for, for medical-related expenses for two years. I don't know if there's a limit on that. And increasing the so-called pass-through uh, deduction from 17.5%, mm -hmm. 70.4%, to 23 percent, very analogous to what the big boys get, the big companies get. Your, your quick thoughts on that, if that was the means by which, or these were the means by which they got these yes votes. Good afternoon, Neil. I, I think it is. There was a lot of concern from senators and certainly members of the House of Representatives who are watching these proceedings very cautiously and very carefully that a lot of their constituents in higher earner states and higher earner cities would be hurt by some of these provisions that were not originally in the Senate bill. So the provisions that you've just outlined, I believe, have given a lot more assurances uh, to some of the senators who are wavering on the fence, uh, even getting someone like a Susan Collins, uh, getting people who have been wavering, who've been hesitant, who are now saying, you know what, this doesn't look so bad after all, and let's go to the House. Let's have a conference and iron out some of these issues so we can get something done for the American people. So I am cautiously optimistic. Uh, of course, Mitch McConnell, the Senate uh, leader, said earlier today that they have the votes. I'm cautiously optimistic they do. Let's have that vote. Let's go to conference and see if we can get a significant tax bill for the American people. I don't think that conference is going to be, you know, easy sledding, do you? No, I don't. I don't think it's going to be easy sledding, but at least it proves that Republicans are at least attempting to govern here, Neil. I mean, yeah, my frustration has been seven years we can't get an Obamacare fix, and now we have the largest majority since 1929, and we can't pass a tax bill? Let's just move forward. Let's try and see if we can actually put uh, one and one together and get two and see if we can build on there and make some progress. You know, when you look at the 10-year plan here, Dan, I mean, many were making a big deal about the tax cuts not paid for. They're going to add a trillion to the deficit and all that. 
And then they totally ignore the fact that just the overspending in this thing yeah. for the next 10 years is going to be another $9 trillion, as if that didn't matter. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> people forget that Barack Obama virtually doubled uh, the deficit over the eight years of his presidency. And I think on this question of whether they're going to increase the deficit over 10 years, I mean, the argument is that the tax bill will not produce enough revenue to fund the government. Now, the question here is, Who's, 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 whose goals are being served here? The governments or the people who are going to benefit from the tax cut? I mean, the idea that, that we should be worried about a tax cut that is not going to give the government enough money to spend, to me, seems to be a completely wrong goal for a Republican tax bill. They should but we're be trying... obsessing over something that is actually one-tenth of the overall debt, that represents one-tenth of the overall debt, ignoring the nine-tenths that's out there. And you mentioned, by the way, debt accumulated under Barack Obama, accumulated under George Bush. Republicans and Democrats have failed at this, and I see very little to indicate that will ever change. And the Joint Tax Committee's assumption is that the economy would only grow 1.9 percent a year over the period of this uh, tax reduction. It's currently growing at 3 percent a year without the tax deduction or in anticipation of it. And also, I would add, with the deregulatory things that uh, So if you Trump sustain the let's say 3.3 percent, as it was in the latest quarter, that would go a long way. To if you get it, it even up to 2 or 2.5 percent, it would go a long way from satisfying these concerns. You know, um, Ron Christie, another thing we've gotten into here is this idea that uh, the president needed a win, Republicans needed a win, but the impact of this won't be felt for a while. For individuals, uh, even for corporations, it depends on how they commit that savings and taxes they're getting. They might just plow back into their stock or their dividends. They're free to do that. but. Even seeing and registering that impact, let alone the delay, hiring folks, expanding plants, equipment, all that stuff, what if that isn't resonating a year from now and we're at the midterm elections, then what? Well, it depends on, of course, what they ultimately pass. True. If they don't get anything accomplished, I think it's going to be disastrous for Republicans. It will demonstrate that we've said for years, trust us with the honor and the privilege. No, no, they government. get it done. I'm saying they get it done, but the impact oh, they get it is done? not oh, no, felt. I, yeah. I, I, if, if, in fact, they do get it done, Neil, I think that would be a nice shot in the arm. I think it would be promises made, promises kept. Yes, it might take several more months down past the election next year in 2018 for people to start actualizing some of those returns and some of those benefits. But at least it will demonstrate that they got significant legislation to the president. The president signed it, and it made a good, honest down payment of what Republicans said they were going to do and how they were going to govern. And I think that is what would give people the ability to say, well, you know what, we'll give these guys two more years or six more years in the House or the Senate, uh, respectively, to try to do more things that are good for the economy. What do you think? Well, I would just, I agree with that, and I would add to what Ron said. What is the alternative to this tax bill? The problem for the last eight years has been a lack of wage growth and a lack of capital investment. The country needs both. They're passing this tax bill to reduce the corporate rate to 20 percent, to increase capital investment, put more pressure on the job market, raise wages. If your argument is that we shouldn't be doing this tax bill, what is the argument of the mm -hmm. Democrats? What should we be doing to wage, uh, raise wages? They had a shot for eight years, Neil, and nothing happened. So now this is what's on the table. At the best, you can say, let's give it a chance. Let's see if it can work over the next two or three years. Fair enough. You would argue that it would be better than 1.9%. I would say so. Yeah. <laughs>